Just wanted to make a real quick video here to warn people about the non-dispensational preachers and ministries out there. Uh, they're coming out of the woodwork right now, and they're working very hard to prepare people to take the mark of the beast. Let me show you how they're going to do it. All right. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 18. This is where the mark of the beast is first mentioned. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Implantable microchips are out. That could certainly be uh, at least part of it. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his name, or excuse me, and his number is 603 score and 6. 666, the mark of the beast. All right. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. And uh, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. All right. So we see Revelation 13, 16 through 18, describes the mark of the beast. Okay? Revelation 14, verses 9 through 11, describes what happens if you take the mark of the beast. Now here's where the non-dispensational heretic comes in, and they say there is no distinction between where we are at today, the Pauline epistles. Actually, the whole Bible is good for, you know, Christians, there were Christians the whole way through, is what the non-dispensationalists will say. Ask them, that's what they believe. And uh, they'll say, you know, so what's good, what's happening over here in Ephesians is going to be lining up with here in Revelation 14 and Revelation 13. Let's look at Ephesians, the book of Ephesians. Let me show you how they're going to do this thing. These people are servants of hell. Let me tell you right now. They are the servants of the Antichrist. They're already coming out as Baptists, and uh, they're really going to mess people up in this time period. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. They'll say, see, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You cannot lose your salvation. Now, is that true? Yes, that's true for today. But what happens if you're a sealed Christian and you go into the time period there where it says if any man takes the mark, worships the beast in his image, he gets God's judgment, God's wrath. How do you reconcile the two? We'll see a dispensationalist will say, okay, well, there has to be an event that stops the what we would call the church age and where Christians are. We're one with Christ. We're part of his body. There has to be something that stops this and then starts a new time period that time of Jacob's trouble about the Jews. The church doesn't need to be purified. We already are pure by the blood of Jesus Christ. So there has to be something new that happens. You see, rapture, the church goes up. Now the time of Jacob's trouble, now they're in a situation where if they take the mark, they're going to go to hell and they're going to burn. So what Paul's writing here in Ephesians 1.13 does not apply to somebody in that time period. You say, well, I don't believe that. I just, I can't believe it. We all have the same, you know, thing. It's all eternal security the whole way through. The, the, the Bible teaches eternal security from Genesis to Revelation. Okay, let's go with that for a minute. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. It's uh, impossible to renew them again unto repentance. Verse 4 down to verse 6. What happened? If they have eternal security, what's the big deal? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and 27. 
For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Uh, how many Christians have sinned willfully after they got saved? Every single one of them. There are times you mess up. So what is this talking about? Um, well, uh, what's the name of the book again? Hebrews. Uh, what's the coming time period? The time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob being Israel. Israel being composed of Hebrew people. You see how easy this whole thing is? Okay. Is there a possible sin in the future that somebody could do that they will not be forgiven of? We talked about it earlier. Revelation 13, Mark of the Beast. Revelation 14, if any man take the mark, he gets God's wrath. It's quite simple. Works out just nicely. But the non-dispensationalists will say, let's erase any distinctions. If, if Paul preached eternal security, then brother, we got eternal security right in through the time of Jacob's trouble. See, they're preparing people to take the mark of the beast. Because you're going to get into that thing and they're going to go, hey, uh, you got to buy and sell? Paul says so over in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. And he provide not for his own, especially for they of his own house. He hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You don't want to deny the faith and be worse than an infidel, do you? Well, then you better provide. But pastor, aren't we not supposed to take the mark of the beast? Well, that's, that's open to some interpretation. I think as long as you take the mark and you're buying and selling, you're okay, just as long as you don't really sincerely in your heart worship the beast and his image. Or maybe you can take it and worship the beast, just not his image. You see how they're going to do it? They're already preparing people to damn them to hell by fooling them and tricking them and thinking that the entire New Testament is all for Christians or the entire Bible is all for Christians. Uh, the entire Bible is for Christians in terms of, uh, you know, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. That's true. You know, Paul writes about the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. Uh, another place he says, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, he says, um, If any man consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is proud knowing nothing. All right, we can read the entire Bible. But you have to look and say, okay, we aren't sacrificing animals anymore. When my wife had our son, I didn't need to go to the priest someplace and bring two turtle doves to be sacrificed. You see what I'm saying? Things have changed. God has a new system in place, and he will have another system in place after the rapture of the body of Christ and now into the time of Jacob's trouble. And please don't insult me with your little thing of there is no rapture, there's, you know, Understand the word rapture is not in there, but we'll call it the catching away of the body of Christ. That doesn't happen and things that's a lie and whatever else. I've preached well over 120 sermons on that subject, proving time and time and time and time again that yes, there is. All right, I've answered every single argument that's out there uh, multiple times over. Don't even try to feed me any of this stuff about it, okay? There's playlists out there that you can watch my stuff on the, I even call it the preacher rapture so people know what I'm talking about. It's actually the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble. But, uh, you know, it's there. But the non-dispensational heretic is already deceiving people into thinking that if what Paul says is for somebody in the time of Jacob's trouble, then what would really be wrong with taking the mark of the beast? Be very careful about these non-dispensational people. If some guy's out there and he's preaching pridefully saying, I am non-dispensational and dispensationalism is a heresy and everything else, um, get away from them. They are a liar. They are a deceiver. Thank you for watching.